Governor Abbott released a statement today on the House Uvalde report saying in part, the findings in their investigation are beyond disturbing and raise serious concerns about the response that day, end quote. Here to talk more about this is former Secret Service counter assault team operative Michael Matranga. Thank you for joining us. Uh, first of all, thank you, sir. Would you would you agree with the governor that the findings are beyond disturbing? 100 percent. I absolutely agree with the governor. You I trust you just saw the video that we just showed. What's your reaction to that? Uh, I, I think that there is no inkling of information or anything displayed in that video that would suggest that uh, Chief Arandondo or a large vast majority of the individuals that responded that day had, had ever gone through alert training. Um, and so I, I don't know when we got into the uh, business of trying to negotiate with an active shooter who's actively shooting and harming young children and uh, teachers. Um, I, I, I'm absolutely disturbed by what I saw. You know, in that video we showed, the police are in the halls, they're armed, and we're hearing gunshots from inside these classrooms. And the police are doing absolutely nothing. Or, well, they're, they're standing there. Um, can you give us some some context based on your experience about how that happens? Well, I think that it, it just goes to show us that um, this fairy tale land of what we're living in is what we call so school security, um, not only in the state of Texas, but also within um, the United States shows that um, we are primarily working within a, a check the box or a CYA um, uh, realm of security where school districts are in charge of conducting their own audits uh, and there's no accountability. Uh, throughout that report, we've seen multiple times where it was indicated that people were non-compliant and there were no consequences. And so I, I would say that moving forward, we need to have proactive, very aggressive uh, approaches and uh, in, in not solely focusing on law enforcement response, because as you see, we had 376 officers in Uvalde. We had over 200 officers in Santa Fe. And there could be some that would argue that the police response might have been too much, which led to the confusion and the chaos of communications breakdown. We now have a chief that's saying that he was not aware that he was the incident commander uh, and he thought that he had a barricaded subject when he knew that there were shots being fired. And not only that, but you had an officer whose wife was calling him, telling him that she was dying. And you had a, a child calling from inside the classroom stating that they needed help. And for him to continue this narrative that it was a barricaded right. subject is just beyond me. Well, you know, the State House report talked about possible charges for some of the police officers because of their inaction. Do you think that would ever happen? You know, um, I do. I think that there could be some that could articulate the lack of action as being negligent. Yes. Um, could it ever happen? I, I really I'm not an attorney, but um, I do believe that that you are sworn to protect and defend uh, the innocent. You're sworn and protect to defend the public. Um, it was obvious that this was an active shooter situation to everyone except for Chief Arandondo. In the report, he never even uh, contacted the Uvalde acting police uh, chief to coordinate efforts or even establish a command, which tells me that the EOPs that these districts are required to uh, provide to the state every year are just simply collections of paper that collect dust in an office. Okay. And so it's very disturbing. All right. Well, we're out of time for now. 